months na po. June 15, March 15, lockdown. Or at least GCQ. Huwag po tayo manghina sa dasal. At lalo na kasi kasama natin ang ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. Let me share in four days before the Feast of the Sacred Heart a deeper significance of the so-called um, Corpus Christi, the festivity we did yesterday, which is actually the body of Christ and therefore the Eucharist. In the next slide, book, I'd like to stress first that it is a meal. You know, the meal starts with God in creation, Genesis chapters 1 and 2. God gave them everything, provided for all their needs. But then in chap general chapter 3, you know, Adam and Eve became so arrogant and even to be hungry even for more than what is provided. Because they wanted to even eat the forbidden fruit. So, what did God do? There is the gift of salvation. The next slide, Paul. Remember the manna in the desert? They could have all perished because they were traveling the desert for 40, day, 40 years. And what can they provide for themselves? But then God sent manna. Look at the children. These are children born in the desert. And this is in Exodus chapter 16 particularly. And then we continue in the history. In the next slide, we find Elijah providing for a woman, a widow of Sarephat with her young child. The jug of oil, the jug of flour were running dry and rotting scares. But God, through the prophet Elijah, with their, you know, mysterious generosity as well, to let Elijah share in their food, God provided. For one year during the drought, they survived. Another gift of salvation, look at this next slide, is what the Psalms sing, diba? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me go down in grassy pastures so that, you know, it can eat and leads me even to quiet waters so that it could drink. So, this gift of the Eucharist is first of all God's provision for food that we necessarily need every single day. It's a meal. It's God being the host of a meal for us. Not only that, you know, when we come to the point of Jesus Christ, next slide, you will find that Jesus also fed the hungry crowd of 5,000 men, not counting women, with only five loaves and two fish. He fed them all. They were all surprised. They were more than satisfied. There were left of 12 baskets full of leftovers. That was not. Jesus also provided for his disciples not to be disheartened. And that is found in the different synoptic gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the institution of the Eucharist, and specifically saying to the bread, this is my body, eat it. This is my blood, drink of it. So it's really a meal, a meal among friends that he did. And then when he was he was risen from the dead, he even appeared during a meal to the disciples of Emmaus, who were no longer believing in any good that this Jesus has done. But Jesus saved them to give them the chance for eternal life. So brothers and sisters, just recalling to you the different elements in the scriptures God actually provides us for our needs. Diba? From the gift of creation to the gift of salvation to something that we cannot make of our own, eternal life, God 
provide. This is the first meaning of the Eucharist. The Lord is present and His presence provides for all our needs, especially for what we cannot give for ourselves. Life, gift of creation, birth, but then salvation, redemption. Kikahos na nga Hindi na natin kaya. He saves us. And then, above all, buhay na walang hanggan. In all of this, it is in the aspect that the Eucharist is food, provision for our hunger for eternal life. So, you may want to go to the Catechism of the Catholic Church. One of the first items in the Catechism of the Catholic Church is that the Eucharist is a meal. Bukas po, we'll go to another significance of the Eucharist. <music> 